this is not for the faint of heart. No, this band. they're like the most abrasive band live. They're the, they played half sets because they threw up in the middle of the sets because they were exhausted or something like that. Welcome to Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael Mansour, and I'm joined, as always, over Skype once again by my lovely, wonderful co-host, Alexander Voltz. Say hello. What it do? What it do? Please, Alex, do me one favor and lower yes. the speakers. I can hear my voice. <laughs> it is it is very distracting. Okay, yeah. The new setup. What about now? What about now? Can you hear yourself? Close enough. Now? I got a little bit, but, it, but it's close enough. Yeah. Uh, this is every album ever. I'm leaving that in. This is every album ever. The podcast <laughs> where we listen to every single album in the world, one artist at a time. It's a new discography, more or less, per episode. And today, we'll be discussing every album by Godhead Silo. Interesting episode. Interesting episode. Patreon requested episode. But before we get into any of that, if you want to help us out, please subscribe on youtube.com slash every album ever. Great review, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, you know, Spotify, everything, all that, everywhere you find everything. It's all over the place. Everything is everywhere. We're all everywhere and we're all one. You can follow me on Instagram at Pope Jesse Ventura and Alex at Mother Puncture. Uh, it, wait. Spotify playlist? Yeah, yeah, they're actually Spot- on streaming for the most part. Yeah. yeah. Sp- yes, they are. Spotify pl- yeah, Spotify playlist on Godhead Silo. You can find a link in the description of wherever you're listening or watching, as well as playlists associated with every other episode. You can find them all at everyalbumever.com, as well as links to merge, blah, blah, blah. Patreon.com slash everyalbumever for bonus episodes, early access to the Loose End series, discounts off merge. You can jump the line if you want to suggest an artist for us, like this episode. This was this was requested. Godhead Silo was, was requested by a patron. Colt, thank you, Colt. This is not the first Colt requested episode that we've done. Colt requested the fluid back in uh, episode 41, I think. Another completely unknown band. And I love it. I love that we're covering these com- super duper obscure bands. They seem to do good for us when uh, when we do these unknown bands. You would think the opposite, but I feel like the feedback and reaction is usually very positive. Usually, and it's also like we've all, we everybody has talked about the Grateful Dead or whatever. Like we, everybody's done a thing on famous bands. No one has done a thing on Godhead Silo. No one. Who are they? This no. is it. This is it. No. Uh, so when, uh, yeah. He, go ahead. Oh, when I was like, I was looking YouTube for like interviews or something with them. Non-existent. There's like, there like one printed interview from 2016. Uh. I think I, I kind of skimmed through that one, but uh, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, this this, this episode was requested by pa- uh, Patron Colt. That sounds like a title, Patron Colt. His name is Colt, by the way, not Patron Colt. He jumped the line. He skipped everybody. He said "fuck you" to everybody else because he's a supporter of the podcast. Thank you so much, uh, man. Oh my god, we have one more Patreon episode coming. Uh, is it next week? No, two that- weeks. Two weeks, yes. Two, in two weeks. And boy, oh boy, do I not want to do that one. But it's okay. It's okay, because we're here right now. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Please, Alex, take over. Yes. Um, This is one of those bands I'm upset. I'm just discovering because I enjoyed them a lot. Um, you did? You yes. liked them? Yes. Interesting. I did not. Oh, interesting. <laughs> this yeah. is... I did not. I thought it was going to be the complete opposite. I thought this was going to be inversed. Mm-hmm. I, by their name, they kind of seem like an industrial band, just based on mm-hmm. the name. And, and uh, the, 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 the stylization of it, it's yes. all one word, lowercase, lowercase, capital, kind of, yeah. Yeah, so I had no idea what I was getting into. And then, to my surprise, uh, it's like a noisy... Hey, I don't want to say sludge metal, but it's it is a dirty two piece band, B- fuzzy bass, uh, oh, drums. Yeah. It's uh, a bass the- that you can you can be fooled into not into not thinking it's a bass. You can if mm-hmm. someone told you this was a guitar, you'd believe it. It's kind of like lightning ball in that respect. Yeah, I was gonna say I feel like if you're a fan of the stoner metal, the sludge metal, um, there's a lot of two piece bands that probably owe a debt of gratitude and are fans of this band, like Big Business, yeah. Yeah. Ohm, Black Cobra, Lightning Bolt, even even Death from Above. 
Yeah, and especially uh, bass drums duos, which is like, I don't know why that works more. I've seen it work way more. Yeah, actually, I actually can't think of, a, of an instance. I mean, the only other instance I can think of is White Stripes, and I don't even like them. But like everyone else does, but that's the only example I could think of. Uh, I guess the the Black Keys and are they two piece? Oh, that's yeah, they I don't are. Like. They are, and then what's? I always get Royal Thunder and S- Royal Blood mix. I think Royal Blood is the two. Royal Thunder is a full full band. Yeah, yeah. Royal Blood then Royal Blood. Um, is a two piece. I'm mm-hmm. not even sure if it's guitar or bass, but I guess that's what the internet. That's part of the is fun, though. For. That is part of the fun that you can't really tell because even with God at Silo, like my God, a lot of it you could definitely tell this is a fuzzed out bass, but a lot of it's like oh, that's really high for a bass, and also like with Lightning Bolt, the was it Brian? It's not Brian Chippendale. That's the drummer. It's Brian something. They're both named Brian. Mm-hmm. The bass player, he uses a banjo string on his bass. So Interesting. Yeah, so that, that's why you hear a lot of high notes in Lightning Bolt. Of course, we're not talking about them, but it's easy to reference. Like, So I don't know exactly what this guy's doing. His name's uh, fuck. It's Mike K- Kunka. Kunka. Is it Kunka? Yeah. Yeah. K-U-N-K-A. Okay, uh, okay. Very, that's it's uh it's very minnesota for like where they're from so that's right yeah that's right then they relocated to olympia washington there we go there we go uh that explains the sub cup the sub sub pop thing because uh when i was first looking up who the hell this band was before listening to them i saw sub pop and i'm like how did how have i never heard of them I know, uh, not to the extent of the fluid, but it's like, this is probably like one of Sub Pop's most neglected bands, right? Yeah, it's got to be. I mean, and they're I mean, interested in the, go keep going, keep going. Okay, so there's going to be a cut, an awkward cut. I'm sure if you, you're, this is, everything died. Once again, this is just what happens when we, we play with technology and we don't know what we're doing. Things sometimes explode and crash. That's what just happened. But we're back. What the hell were we talking about? I was saying they have to be one of Sub Pop's most neglected bands. There we I go. wanted. Yes, I want it. It's for the most part, all their stuff is streaming except yeah. for one thing. But that I one wanted, thing, by the way, is very hard to find. It's not even on YouTube. Yes, and um, that's what piqued my interest. It's uh, j- jumping the gun a little bit. It only cost me eight dollars with shipping. There is no demand for this band. But, um, <laughs> so sad. But yeah, so like nothing's been like repressed or re-released. But I guess mm-hmm. there's no demand for it because, like I said, I got a few <laughs> a few of their shit real mm-hmm. cheap. Right. Um, but I'm going to cherish it like it's a hundred dollar purchase. That is so. so sweet. And I should clarify, uh, I don't like this band, but I do like one album from this band. I like one nice. album and I was very glad that I came out liking something because I was like, uh, I mean, I have, I get it. It's a noise duo. They're very loud. I like this stuff. It's fun. But riff wise, writing wise, I can do without it. And then one album was like, OK, all right, I'll listen to this one again. I, it'd be funny if it's the same one, but I yes, hope. this is, this is not for the faint of heart. No, no. And it's not like, man, cause I, I read little bits of, uh, you know, room, not rumors, like little snippets of, uh, what's the word, uh, testimonials of people who've mm-hmm. seen them in like, uh, they're like the most abrasive band live there the they played half sets because they threw up in the middle of the sets cause they were exhausted or something like that. What, what, what am I missing? What's what's what? I didn't read that much uh, about them, but yes, one of their albums pr- will blow out your speakers and your stereo equipment if you have the bass cranked up all the way. Do not do that for this band. I was see, I read that as well, and I got real curious. Like, hmm, I don't want to lose my speakers testing this theory, but that's a good way to to. Sp- you know spur interest at least not that it's i mean it's not that much interest because it's like this band is so ugly and loud that they're gonna fuck up your equipment uh that only works for some people they should uh they should this open up for uh 
my bloody Valentine and people can this leave the show feeling like shit. Yeah. I mean, that's a, it's a different kind of wall of noise, but very <laughs> wall of noisy. Uh, okay. So duo Minneapolis, you said, right? Yes, they started out as a three piece, but uh eventually this whittled down to uh Mike and Dave, the bass player and drummer. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, they relocated to Olympia, Washington, and to me they sound like um like I'm a big amphetamine reptile All right. uh label and they sound like an amphetamine reptile. <laughs> Absolutely. And hundred percent. But yeah, they were originally signed to kill rock stars. So um that's kind of where where we enter the the frame. By the way, before we start uh anything, anyone listening or watching, if you want us to cover more AMRAP bands, please let us know. Cause I want any fucking excuse to cover AMRAP bands. Fucking Hammerhead, the cows, uh Halo flies. Like I want to cover all those. That sounds fucking fun. But let's just say no one's talking about them that much. <laughs> like there's no reason unless someone is like, "Hey, I actually want to hear about this really super super duper ex- obscure band." You know what? We should just do it one day. We're both fans. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like we've gotten pigeonholed into like the '90s rock guys. Not kind on a purpose. little bit. Yeah, but what that's like. what people. <laughs> Yeah, it's what they like. You got to give the people what they want. Only sometimes, though. God damn it. I have to like my <laughs> life first. That comes before everything. Yes, uh, so, yes. So this is a, a relatively breezy discography. This I, I listened to the whole thing in one day. I mean, over the course of... Let's do it a couple of times, but I was man, I managed to squeeze them all in one day, one day. Um, mm-hmm. Altogether, three full-length albums and two EPs. First EP came out in 1993. Last album came out in 1998. So if you're ready... You might as well jump into it. I am ready. So this is 1993's The Friendship Village EP. The most straightforward bass sound you're ever going to get. And it's very rare. I'd say it's pretty rare for this band. It is. I, it's a misleading song, but I love it. I thought we were going to get, you know, kind of like a slint band based yeah. on this. The fact that it's a two-piece, I knew we wouldn't, though. Because there's only so much you could do with a two-piece. That's true. So, uh, more astute listeners will will catch it already. That those drummings, that those those drumming, uh, that drumming. Jesus Christ! You know what? Don't listen to me. I'm an idiot. <laughs> that drumming is a little iffy. Not the best uh, sounding drums right. ever, but it's it works for the band. So whatever. Yeah. Okay, we got a little taste. They can get loud. They can get loud. They will get. They will continue to get much louder. But again, what do you think about this EP? I think it's a nice little EP. I didn't love it, but I think that opening track is really cool. I believe it's the title track. Yep. Um, the second track is kind of filler. It's yeah. like. A noisy jazz song. Yeah, it sounds like a experimental jazz dicking around more than anything. It's it doesn't seem like anybody like it. Just did they really need to put that there? Did they really need to put that there? If if the Wu Tang Clan was a, a noise band, because there's like kung fu samples in it, and they do some funny samples. I will give them that and some weird stuff. By the way, definitely worst. Definitely worst. Interesting. Yeah, this is interesting. I, I did feel like each one got better and better for the most part. Uh, but this one, it was, man, it was such an unwelcoming introduction for me because like the, the title track is fine. I don't love that main riff, but it's fun. It's fine. It works. And then everything else I'm out, everything else I'm out. Interesting. Um, 
I kind of I I think the last two tracks I like more than the stuff on the following album though. So mm-hmm. like I said, uh it, I wasn't blown away, but I wasn't turned off either. I was definitely interested. So my main gripe with the not I have a lot of gripes with this band, but the main gripe with this record specifically, actually the first few records is absolutely the drum the drumming. Was it uh Dan Ha? Um I think it's his name. Yes. Yes. He is not great. He gets pretty good though. Like but as they go, he, mm-hmm. he, you hear them getting better. It's just a very interesting thing. It, it makes you kind of feel like you're witnessing them aging, which is kind of cool. But early on, like the, his, you know, the fills are super rushed and mistimed and like oftentimes incomplete. Like he doesn't even finish the fills. He just kind of like, Oh fuck. Okay. I'm back into the beat. Like it feels really, you could hear him getting tired almost like, there's a thing like uh I'm not really good at drums, but like I can do better than this. And that's that's not a good sign. Like when I feel like I can do better than someone at drums, it usually means it's bad. <laughs> it usually means it's pretty bad because uh anybody who's played drums for even a, a few seconds know knows like it's a thing you gotta it's its own type of cardio. Like you have to train that, train your legs to be able to move for that long in your arm. Like it's a very specific kind of cardio. And you can tell when someone doesn't have it because then uh you hear them hitting the bass drum harder because what they do i'm sure you, as a as a drummer you know you fucking know this first time when you get super tired you start using your quad muscle and your hips to hit the bass drum instead of your your calf which is like faster and better and there's more nuance there but if you if you don't have the stamina for it you start using your whole leg which makes you start hitting it louder and you could hear it getting uneven and that's all i could hear the entire time was this dude getting tired making uneven like like uh he's just hitting it in weird ways it's just bothered me i think the song you must pay is a good example of that a lot of the uh a lot of the fills there are you know this yeah fill. Uh, not even that clean though but um that's the that's specifically the song i noted yeah like yeah it's like it starts out strong and then at the end of the fill it's just like oh fuck oh, whatever all right we're done it's every time it's every time at first like yeah, three it's, records it's like that it's the it's the first fill anybody ever ever learns just uh, digga 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 yeah Yep. Uh, so the reason why it bothers me so much is not that like I listen to fucking Parker Punk. Not every drummer is a fucking amazing, clearly, but it's because it's a, it's a two piece. All you got is the two guys. If one of them is awful, I can, I'm not going to be able to ignore that. And th- fair enough. And this isn't. Uh, this is another huge problem I have with this band is that they don't really. It's both. You no, know, it's a thing that I respect and don't enjoy which is a, a little bit of cognitive dissonance there. They don't do overdubs for the most, like they don't, they just, it's just the bass. Like he's just playing what he would do live. <laughs> it sounds like it was recorded live. And because of that, it definitely feels realist. It feels definitely feels uh, authentic, raw, live, uh, genuine, but it also leaves no room for like songwriting or, or error for that matter. Yeah, it all feels very smushed together, like crammed crammed together in like a like a sardine can. If that makes any sense. It does. Uh I was not as offended, but uh I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. So that is most of my shitting on this band out of the way. I swear. Nice. It's all but uphill from here. Huh? It's all uphill from here. Then. I think so. I think so. So rough intro. But we know this is already a very odd and interesting band. So uh, let's see if anything else to add. I do not. Let us move on to the first actual full length. This is 1994's The Scientific. Oh, my God. I'm just so I'm fumbling everything today. Everything. The Scientific Super Cake. I love to trap you in with something that seems. Yeah. Yeah. 
this is a, a fine song, but I was already like, this. I'm not. I'm not moved by this at all. It's <laughs> standard noise rock. It makes me just want to hear different bands that that play this style, but just. Man, I just said I was gonna stop shitting on them. All right, well, I'll stop. I'll stop. You know what? I, I, I think I was being harsh. I think I was being harsh on this song. <laughs> yeah, uh, this a good, I think one of the stronger songs on here, but yeah. uh, kind of kind of by default, I'm just going to give this worst, least favorite. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Yeah, this is just because this is un, this is the most unrelenting they have. This is like driven by noise and anger which is fine yeah like people people can be in the mood for that but um i'm getting old i guess so i guess i mean no i i i I get both sides of it like honestly you know what saved this from from getting worse the one thing it was really one thing that 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 took it out of the running for worse for me you know what that was is it that there's a song called ventriloquif Close. <laughs> it's not really a song, right? That's just like a like a transition kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's not a song. It's actually that first main riff to birthday sandwich. Interesting. I love that riff so much that I was like, "Oh, this is this is fucking phenomenal." The song itself I, drags on, I think, way too long, and it does a bunch of other stuff that I don't care for. But that main riff, I love it so fucking much. That I was like, "This is a me like." I, there's nothing even remotely close to that on the first EP. So it's like, yeah, just because there's something I absolutely adore, definitely you're safe. You're safe. Yes. I also noted that that was an awesome baseline on there. Yeah. Um, probably like the worst of the worst, especially for you, probably is the end track Battle of Planets. Um, you I, know what? I, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. It, yeah. I wouldn't listen to that song again but it does feel more structured than most noise tracks so the battle of planets is what is it 11 minutes yes 11 and a half minutes i like it and interest i don't know why it's objectively a bad song it is it's not even us barely a song it's just i don't you know what i think it is i think it's how sludgy it is there's basically no drums it really reminds me of uh sort of a a a garage or shittier version of uh first track in lysol jesus christ what is it called hung bunny oh oh yeah something something like that yeah um, uh, lysol by the melvins you know obviously a groundbreaking sludge metal album that first it reminds me of that where it just plays a super slow sludgy riff for forever with nothing mm-hmm. happening so it kind of ch- like it triggered like that little part of my brain that enjoys that i was able to just sort of zone out and they do a few things like that uh especially in the, the next couple of records where they'll just be hammering on one thing for a lifetime and it doesn't bother me i have no idea why it doesn't bother me it just seems like yeah hypnotic it is hypnotic, and I think uh, if people are a fan of of sludge, it's 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 comforting. And speaking of the Melvins and uh, a band like Suno that doesn't play anything, um, I believe Joe Preston <laughs> helped record most of their most of their stuff. So really? his presence is definitely felt on these. I think which uh, which Melvins albums did he play on? If you remember, <sighs> he. <sighs> Let me look it up. But he like um he definitely got like his own EP with the Melvins yeah, when I they remember did that. like yeah. the Kiss thing. Um, that and had then to have been the, the worst of the 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 solo Melvins EPs, right? You know, I haven't listened to them. You never um, listened to them? Yeah, he was he was on my soul, of course. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Uh, listen to the Dale Crover EP now. Like after this episode, listen to Dale Crover EP. That one's fucking okay. awesome. That one's great. Yeah. I think I've only heard the buzz one, but yeah. um, 
Joe Preston also in Harvey Milk and High on Fire. He's he's fucking awesome. He's one he's of the best, yeah. He's in there. He's definitely one of in the there. best metal bassists ever. But um, what else is on here that I like? I don't um, mind Mister Pushup. Yeah, that one. That one. You get a little bit of a break. That's more. Yeah. That's slower. It's sluggier. Not as driven by anger. Or noise, I should say. Still very angry, but um <clears throat> and then you you have like interesting things like two peanuts are walking down the street. I or like it's it. like it's like the Halloween theme. Yeah, it's a it's a filler track, but it 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 still seems way more interesting than a lot of the other full songs. And, you know, it's like you know, creepy murder piano. There's like a lot of, it, there's no drums really, but you do feel this heavy rhythm to it. There's like a lot of rumbling, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. Um I think it's cool. I think it's. I think it works. Uh, but I one thing I did notice on this whole album was I I noticed early on I was like oh I'm lowering my standards for what a good song is on this album. Like I like <laughs> I love you, but I don't really like I love you. I like it on this mm-hmm. album, but you know I'm not gonna. Yeah, the only thing I I truly love is birthday sandwich, and then I can zo- totally zone out to battle the planets, uh, and then other stuff like you know breath. Miss, uh, rescue mission number 43 Blah. not for me no i uh i kind of liked hopefully they will learn See, i did too some, go ahead got some like mathy mathy riffs on there and then this the uh the rolling toms which uh aren't Amaze, like oh that's like an interesting fill or you don't come to this band for poly riffs no no <laughs> no but the thing i noted about that song that main riff to me sounds like a shittier version of lady shoes by the jesus lizard oh interesting and i'm gonna have to do a side by side there's a couple of, there's one other song that we're gonna get to later on that another i was like oh this is just another shittier version of this riff and I, like i always say that this person ripped out this person i don't i never mean that i always mean like uh i'm a huge proponent of parallel thinking and like you know how many riffs are there in the world like especially if you're just playing you exactly know, a few minutes i don't think anybody ripped off anybody but you know it's just similar enough to make me think of this and therefore i think you know less of it just because like all right i heard it before um also they're they're kind of peers i think at least so mm-hmm. Absolutely, they definitely are. I would say they're not even the same fucking league as the Jesus Lizard because I think Jesus Lizard is one of the greatest bands of all time. But just a man's opinion. I'm being really catty this episode. I'm being way. I'm being an asshole to this band. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that computer crash really just. Oh God, yeah, just I rebooted into a different personality. I'm now a bad guy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah i still liked it more than the ep but I, I get this one being a little rough to sit through especially if you know the 11 minutes is a it's a, it's a, a lot it's a lot yes i will i will say all all this shit is super short i never felt fatigued or anything like that honestly i didn't either um even though like yeah a lot of this is like you know it's not really my my style of noise rock if that makes any sense people who don't listen to noise rock but uh yeah no it's actually it's actually pretty breezy like i said at the beginning it's not a bad discography to get through uh but this isn't alex's worst and least favorite let us move on to this is the ep that's hard to find this is (laughs) jesus christ uh so it's technically self-titled but it's also known as the booby trap ep this one came out in 1996 I also think it's funny that we've not once mentioned vocals because I don't. I feel like it just is completely unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 part of the the noise to me. Yeah. Um, on on some songs, I did notice they have like funny funny lyrics. But, oh, really? Um, 
couldn't make out a single word. Okay, all right. This is a short one. How long is he, Pete? Two minutes, three Pretty minutes, nine nine minutes. Yeah, yeah. This is a, this is a short one. Um, so this is this is one my interest peaked in the bath. Really? Yeah. Like, um, I really like booby trap. I, it's a little groovier. Like, I was very interested. Like, are they turning a page, or is that a an outlier? Yeah. And then it's like turn up the vocals. You get some like electronic stuff in there. I actually then, like the the drums in that song a lot. I think the drums are like the the only thing I like about that song. Really, uh, they they feel more hooky than the, the actual bass riffs. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's definitely the the craft work influence mm-hmm. on that track. And then they cover some like British prog rock band with Gypsy, and it's just fucking rad. Oh, Probably you like that good- one? I hate it. Those vocals enraged me. Interesting. Yeah. It's probably not a good representation of the original band, but mm-hmm. for like Godhead Silo, I was like, this is interesting. Also, I don't know if it's representation of the actual recording or this the version we got, because it sounded like it was ripped from vinyl, maybe, but uh-huh. um you already talked about how they have like a live live quality. I yeah. think this one, uh at least for the version we got a little bit more. But they're they're also more refined here. So I was like, this definitely got me excited for the next album. So I uh, actually heard this one out of order because uh, I didn't. Uh, Alex had to send me this one because I couldn't find it. Um, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I heard the following album first. So going back, it, it just felt like more the same. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, I don't know. Like it, it just felt like, like, yeah, if you like this band, this is completely fine, which is, which is what you're saying is completely solidifying that. Like, yeah, if you're, if you're into what they're doing, this is, there's nothing wrong with this at all. Uh, but fuck man, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I, I was pissed <laughs> off at this album. Like I actually wrote down this band is officially pissing me off. Cause I, there's just so Holy little shit. for me to grab. Like, like writing wise just feels like man, anybody can write this. And I appreciate how fucking crazy and noisy they are. But again, like there's only so much of that I can listen to for enjoyment, I guess. Um, I sound like an old man. I sound like a fucking crotchety old man. It's too loud. Lower it. But yes, it's actually, Mike, it's not bad. I, I will say it's not bad. Just not for me. Mike is 90 years old for this podcast. In many um, ways. Yeah, it's, it sucks. It's hard to find, but. It's not expensive <laughs> to no. track down no. on vinyl. So, yeah, interesting why this one wasn't uh, reissued. And not reissued, but you know, at least streaming. Because I, I, def- I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's the cover. But then there's a cover later on, so that doesn't make any sense. Oh, this, this, um, I did stumble onto their their band camp, and I was in- interesting. Like, there's only, it's like the compilation, the first album and one other album like it's not everything you can find more streaming than on their band camp which is also leads me to more questions like is that just all they have the rights to why those and like i don't know it seems like oh, there's a lot here that no one has talked about because no one asks and so we're just looking for more questions who who requests to this again i'm sorry i forget his name um, cold me you and cult are gonna this demand sub pop release i know all all the weird albums just for archival sake for fuck's sake man please just leave it leave it to history okay don't fucking wipe it all right god damn uh same thing even though again even though i didn't like the fluid i still think they fucking need to exist yes yeah we did we did advocate for yeah for free the fluid free the fluid <laughs> episode 41 um so now it is time for the second album two more left two more left second album uh where am i where am i at? this is 1996's skyward in triumph <laughs> Thank you. 
I really like this intro. Yes, you need you need something different because the the next track we've we've heard already, but the because it's not streaming, I'm glad it's here. Yeah, yeah. in a little ahead of myself, but yeah. Again, like not unlike uh, Birthday Sandwich from the first album, I heard this. I was like, this is what I want more of. Like, kind of dialing it, dialing, dialing it in a little bit more melodic. Get crazy eventually, but you know, have some nuance there. This makes me happy. I like this shit. Also helps capture the uh, the weird eagle in space with the rainbow album cover. Very yeah. helps capture that vibe. Weird album covers. I like how each one, each album cover looks like a completely different genre. <laughs> it does. Yeah, this is the the seventies prog rock yeah, album cover. This is the Bruce Springsteen cover. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen wishes he had covers this cool. He'd be like, oh, this take a, a picture of my pockets. I was going to say ass, but you chose it better. <laughs> Both right. So that is literally the entire track. But because, yeah, you know what? We shouldn't even put on the second track because it's literally what we already heard. So we, yeah, we just heard it. It's, it's, uh, it's a little cleaner. Um, yeah, they just as fun as the first time. Booby Trap for this album. It's the it's the following track. Um, it's the only song from the EP that that made it out of that EP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then on the new stuff, I really like Chuck or Not Overdrive. Really, um, you like that? I do. I feel like you know that with Booby Trap. It's like okay, we're not like it's not funk but you know as mm-hmm. funky as a a band like this can tap into right they're a little groovier you can you can bob your head a little easier to those songs they're definitely more song like yes let's just and less unintelligible walls of noise um my problem again unsurprisingly i don't think they're good writers i don't think they're good riff writers and it just I, it's just blaring blaringly obvious to me like it felt at this point at least it felt like they landed on one nugget of gold once an album that i fucking love and the rest i'm like all right this sounds like just dudes in the garage and like again that's appealing to a lot of people and even me to some extent but Mm -hmm. from a writing standpoint definitely not however there are parts of this album that i like a lot for god knows why such as (laughs) guardians of the threshold why do i like it why do I like it? I thought you were going to hate it. At It starts off like a standard Godhead Silo song. <clears> and <throat> then there's like this noisy part with these like sporadic vocals peppered in. And I looked at it. I'm like, holy shit, this 15 minutes. It's a 15 minute song. And let me just clear, let me just break down parts of that 15 minutes because it's very easy, surprisingly. So you get the first like four minutes it's like a you know standard godhead silo song like you're saying it's crazy in its own ways but still around the four and a half minute mark it hits it starts uh mike starts hitting the same note for mm-hmm. literally you can count it for five minutes he is yes. hitting the same note for five minutes nothing's happening it's just him hitting the note for five minutes and then the drums come in where he's still hitting the same note for another four minutes, but this time with drums. And then it has a, like a very short outro. I and don't I'm, know I'm why not, I enjoy it. I'm not like a hundred percent in describing the vocals, but the vocals are kind of like someone like driving by in a car. It's like, uh, 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 like that. Yeah. It's very, again, tapping into like that spacey, spacey vibe. I, I really like the end bit. I think that, like makes the 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 five minutes of i don't want to call it noise because it's, it's not it's not and i don't you know what i think 
it reminds me of and why I'm enjoying all of this, this really like the parts of the band that I should like, I don't. And the parts that I should hate, I do like, like <laughs> with it, what it reminds me of is uh, Glenn Bronca. Do you have you ever heard him? I have not. He's like one of the pioneering no wave guys. Anybody doesn't know no way, no wave. That was a, like one of the earliest forms of noise rock came about in, in New York in the late seventies. And Glenn Bronca was like, you know, he's, he was a, he's a big guitar guy, but guitar in a way that it's, I can't say noise because his, um, I think it's his first album. It's called the Ascension. Highly recommend Glenn Bronca's the Ascension. Cause it's like, it's all instrumental. It's like an orchestra of guitar, but it's not solos. It's not neoclassical. It's just using guitars in ways that you never thought to use them. And there's a lot of like hammering on one note for a long time. And then one other guitar comes in with like a complete, uh, like higher octave of the same note. And then it's just hammering that note and it becomes like really hypnotic. And it's again, it's like a, another proto sludge type thing where it's just hammering this, this vibe for a long time. And I think that song nails it. This taps into it. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I guess it's not really, it's not going back to what you said. Like you don't think they write great riffs, but mm-hmm. then there's a song like buttress of solitude mm-hmm. where around the two minute mark, mm-hmm. it's like that bass isn't super memorable, but man, it is, it is crunchy. Uh-huh. It feels, it feels good when it kicks in. And then it goes like a minute later, it this it gets groovy again. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's interesting and in a simple type of way. That song is batshit. That is there is some really crazy stuff happening there. I really appreciate it from a sonic point of view, but uh again, it's just the riff that riffs I don't care about. Like if you take away you take away all the writing. And I love this band. You take away all of the riffs that they wrote, and I actually do like this band a lot. The presentation <laughs> is so fucking fun. It's exactly what I dig. It's why I like Lightning Bolt. It's not that I love Lightning Bolt songs. I love, I love some of them, but like it's mostly the, just the fucking batshitness of it. The, the wildest thing they do is they go full Beastie Boys with the title track, which... Oh, it, who the fuck saw that coming? I'm putting that on because it, it caught me off guard so much. Especially because it's the title track. You think it would be something a little bit more I don't spacey? Know. Well, yeah, but like at least longer. It's like super short and it <laughs> makes no sense. This is the title track. <laughs> what is that bass sound? It just made me think of Beastie Boys stuff. Especially with the vocals, yeah. yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. There's no way around it. Really silly, fun track to close out. Yeah. The album, it's if you weird. enjoyed the album. Or maybe you enjoy it and you're like, what is this dog shit? But it's so I thought weird. it was Go ahead. Yeah, I just thought it was like a kooky. It's like two minutes. It, yeah. It's nothing. It's kooky. It seems odd to throw a 15 minute song in the middle of the album. I think it's paced <laughs> like dog shit. I think it's just it's a really weird album to get through. It's just I don't know. It just feels like they just put it, put them all in a hat and just picked them at random, which one was going to go after the next one. Yeah, it's not again. It's short, but I was, I was fully, fully invested here. So I was, I was a fan by this point. I was not a fan, but I was like, at least I am not lost. I still yes. like. There's still a lot of this that I appreciate. There's bits and bits here and there that I really like a lot. And I again, I was like, at least I like the stuff that I thought I would hate. At least I, I like the stuff that seems like nobody would like. So mm-hmm. there's something. There's something here. It's fucking weird, but it's just something here. But we are damn near at the end of our journey. This is the last album. Last album. Uh, yes. And here we are. 1998. Share the fantasy. And this shit is abrasive, so oh, brace yeah. yourselves. It, yeah. I was like, what a nice, nice little intro. And then... Hold on, say something again. 
shit. Uh oh. You're out. Can't hear you. Uh, am, am I out? Because it's so loud. It, it might be because it's loud. I hear you again. Keep yes, because it's, it's loud. That's how loud this fucking song is, everybody. <laughs> it completely drowned out Alex in my ears. Oh. That, this is fucking rad. That's a really cool part in an uh, angry song like this. Yep. Oh. And I actually like the way it's produced, even though it sounds like distorted horseshit. I think it works <laughs> really well. Okay, okay, let, let's 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 talk. I think we are in agreement here. Yes. Yep. Best personal favorite, and best even though Mike favorite. hated the band, yep. I love the band. We can agree this is the best. Clearly, the best. Clearly, it's like they finally figured out how to be a band here. It feels like to me. There's so many there's so many tracks I liked uh, on here and um yeah I just wasn't expecting so many so many to call them hits is silly but yeah yeah like if they if they like toured and it was just performing share the fantasy I would yep. be like fuck yeah oh yeah fuck for sure yeah for sure uh so that that first song already got me on board it and it's oh man it's it's the noisiest production they've 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 done yet it's just so fucking noisy everything is distorted everything is the drums are so distorted it's like fucking crazy but hook wise it's like fuck that's really it's really fucking cool and also aside from the layer of distortion and everything it's it sounds way more live like this is the, the act like legit the best production they've had it's still not clean or good production but it, it sounds uh like the drums sound way more lively they sound way more awake than they've ever because mm-hmm. a lot of the old records or the earlier records they sound a lot of a lot of muffled sounds on the snare and bass drum specifically a lot of you could tell it's uh it was recorded i don't want to say in a closet but you, it sounds like you know it was, <laughs> it's really dampened here lively lively as shit i think it sounds real good yeah um like Bunsen over the Johnson. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Like that brings the heavy biscuits. There's a part that sounds like double bass, but I'm sure it's not. He yeah. does not seem like a double bass player to me. And then like on top of being a great song title, relationship relationship, just, a, just a great song. You could, you could like dance to that song. It's so much fun. It's cool. I like it. I do. I do. I don't know what the fuck is happening with that horrific Bill Cosby impression at the end. I, it's so bad. I can't even tell if they're trying to make it an impression. That's how right? I, it's. It's so yeah, it's so bad. It's good. But you're <laughs> like, did they put it on there? Because it's so bad. It's good. But it's um, like, imagine. Imagine Adam Sandler doing a bad Bill Cosby impression. And that's what it sounds like. They got like the the verbiage down, but didn't put a voice yeah <laughs> they just made up their own voice they, oh jesus christ i didn't do the the little you know born in the go pop. Little, yeah you know it's fucking yeah. ridiculous uh but the song is cool the actually the, um, the only tracks i don't care i mean there's a few i don't care for like uh time to feed the pythons i don't think is that great that's like their most indie rock sounding song but it it gets like a thumbs up for me because it, this adds to the diversity of the album and, and stuff they could do. I think it was Mike's vocals that really, that really sealed it for me. I think like, I like him a lot better when he's drowning in distortion. I think it sounds a lot mm. better. Uh, and also um, like it's, I don't think it's a bad cover, but they cover in the air tonight by old Philly Collins. I don't even love the song. It's fine. It's a long cover too. It's a long cover, uh, and it takes a while to get going. It's fine, you know. If you like the song, you'll probably like the cover. Well, no, that's an overstatement. <laughs> that's not true. If you like this band and you like the song, you'll probably like the cover. Yeah, I didn't think it was like a brilliant 
cover but you know they they made it their own there's yeah. still the recognizable stuff in there and i was i was just riding so high to, on uh brain cloud so brain cloud is is good but let us let's not pretend that that's not that baseline isn't just a rip off of blueprint by fugazi see didn't even write that's probably why i liked it i <laughs> me too you know <laughs> like i like these the like and I use this very lightly, the the softer side, because yeah. it doesn't really last long. It's, um, that, I actually, because I, the, in the earlier records, the, the old songs that I said I fucking loved were the softer stuff, because it was so infrequent earlier. At least here, mm-hmm. this album feels well paced. It, it actually feels even. Everything else felt so uneven. This one feels right. Feels right. It does. Um, oh, man. Nap nap attack. I just thought that was a killer track too. Just like I I didn't like it at first li- on first listen. Second listen, won me over. Yeah, yeah. nice, nice. And um, actually, before we go into more song specifics, the the biggest biggest deal about this whole fucking album, they're doing overdubs now. They figured are out. They? Hey, we don't have to just play with just the one instrument on an album where we're literally in a studio taking our time. Yeah. Fucking there's, it's, there's multiple instruments all over the place. There sounds like, um, double tracking for the bass. Uh, it doesn't sound so much like a demo because everything else kind of had the air of demo ness to it because it's just, you could hear this one guy doing that thing and this other guy doing that thing. And it's just, you, I get bored with that because you know how limited it is. You know, they're only capable of so much, uh, but here, these are full songs. These are full elaborated stuff, fully elaborated stuff. And yeah, just a simple thing like overdubs, like it just fucking changes everything, everything. Yeah. Um, it does, it does make it more full and you almost wonder if it's a budget issue, but you're like, mm, no, they, they were on sub pop after Nirvana. They, there's no, like, it's very deliberate or maybe sub pop was this uh-huh. like no one cares about you guys you don't get money <sighs> the thing is when i think about overdubs and people who don't do them it's either one completely stylistic completely stylistic or you have no time you have like i mm-hmm. just got the one take and we're out like that's that's it's one of those two options or something because it's not hard to do overdubs and it, it really does make like white stripes they're two piece and guitar is very limited when you're in a two piece or when you're just playing, playing with a, a drummer. That's why they, there's a million overdubs in the white stripes and like, especially the mm-hmm. later albums, there's a million overdubs. It sounds better. More instruments sound <laughs> better. Like it's just the way it is. And that, and it's not any different here. Uh, it's, it's the most developed record by a fucking landslide. Yeah. Uh, last like song specific thing the ending track you're fighting me now i just think that's a good like what the band is and what mm-hmm. they can do like that's a like great representation of what they've become it's weird it's heavy it's just it's just solid there's like the weird electronic track tacked on the back i'm not the- a fan of that that tacked on electronic thing at all I like the first because half. it bring because it brings back the awful Bill Cosby impression. <laughs> it does. It absolutely does. Uh, also, no, another thing I got to mention uh, is uh, Dan versus Vel- fellow Dan. Yeah, I fucking love it. It's because like the first half of it is just it's spooky piano, a lot of ambience, bells. It's very creepy and it's well done. And then it just fucking kicks ass in the second half. It just goes crazy. It's great. Yeah, it's so really like almost like yin and yang thing going on mm-hmm. there that um it's it's long i don't want to call it an interlude but mm-hmm. it does almost feel like a transition song yeah. into all right that, that this goes back to like how this album is paced and where where the tracks are though so yeah it's literally five minutes but it feels like an interlude because of just mm-hmm. the way, yeah. Again, it's paced well. It doesn't. This this is their longest record. Does not feel their longest at all. And but, go ahead. Yeah, if you got nothing to say, that I mean, they from there they they went on hiatus for a little bit. They started a band with the murder city murder city devils vocalists. 
mm-hmm. called Smoke and Smoke, which doesn't seem widely available, but I like Murder City Devils, so mm-hmm. I want to I want to track that down. I did um, read uh, an interview in uh, Dan, the drummer. By the way, last thing about this album, he sounds good. <laughs> like there's no he's he's yes. gotten so much better. I have no complaints about his drumming on the last album, um, or like the last two records for that matter. But uh, apparently, he he almost got his hand cut off during the recording, or like right around this time of the last album, and. Mm-hmm. Like he basically ruined his ability to play drums. He had to like do a bunch. Like his the doctor said he wouldn't play ever again. But he, you know, you know how musicians are. They find a way. So he eventually got it working again for the most part. It, yeah, he's probably like if the dude in Def Leppard could do this, I can. Uh, oh yeah, I can do this. <laughs> dude, wait, I probably mentioned on the podcast at some point that I, uh, I have a friend who's a friend of mine is friends with that guy's daughter weird yeah i went to this my friend i went to college with she she's friends with his daughter and she even went to go see them <laughs> she's like yeah you know the guy with the one arm I was like, of course i know the guy with the one arm that's the only <laughs> member of death leopard anybody knows yeah it's true but um they would they'd uh and even though they never broke up they would get back together in 2015 play mm. some shows for the people who like them mm. and then uh Mike would also go on to do an, an album with the Melvins called Three Men and a Baby. So, uh, oh, right. Wait, when did that come out? Um, that's like more, more recent mm-hmm. Melvins. Let me, yeah, because they've been they were going on a stint where they're just doing a bunch of like spinoff albums with a bunch of like random, not random people, but you know, non canon <laughs> Melvins members. Yeah, that kind of felt like after big business left the fray yeah. they didn't really know what to do so it was like will this do all these uh that was in 2016 that sounds about right yeah like um, they did the thing with um well they're still playing with um steve is it steve from uh, red cross yes is and- it steve malcolm <sighs> fuck of course i'm forgetting his name uh and as well as they brought the, the their first bases back obviously the stuff with uh trevor dunn from bungle uh yes uh steve mcdonald mcdonald there we go dude man that guy is awesome they are red cross is such a fucking fun band to see live uh i feel like different podcast i think they're fun but like i can't i can't get into their i get it albums i get it uh i'm a big fan of their like their first ep like a big fan of their first ep i I never really got too into the later stuff but just they're a fun they're like a fun band uh they're really good performers and obviously everyone's really good in the band and Steve wears some outlandish outfits. And I always appreciated that. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, but okay. So the last reunion, last God hits out reunion was, uh, was it 2017? It's the last time they've played. Uh, yeah. 2017. Yeah. And I also saw that, uh, uh, only they're, they're, <laughs> Basically, not going to record again. One is like, yeah, all right, let's maybe we'll record. And one's like, mm, maybe not. Mm. Yeah, what? What else is uh, is he doing? <laughs> it's the thing. Like, it's not like they have this crazy legacy where releasing a new album and it doesn't work out well will taint it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they're just not in them. You know, you never know. I always, yeah, I them. think about that a lot with like older musicians. Like, wh- why, why not? What is it? Because like, I'm a fucking psycho. Like, I'm always gonna keep making music no matter what, even if I'm a dying old man. So always like, like, especially when when you see like really good bands that just don't want to. I'm always curious. Hmm. Yeah. It's uh. It's like unspoken. Oh, there's this like unspoken things you can't can't talk about while you're still recording and or mm. touring and i always appreciate the ones that are like listen man if the fans want it we'll consider it but if not we don't need to do that i always appreciate the fuck out of those those ones i man like if only i don't blame the pixies for trying but they should have they should have stopped <laughs> fucking stop they had a flawless discography Flaw- yeah. it was flawless they're one of the greatest bands, and then they, I mean, I remember, I remember, I still vividly remember when I first heard their reunion uh, EP, and I was devastated. I was fucking devastated. Oh. It had like, yeah, it had like their first new song. It, this had like, 
this shitty the shitty fucking name and i was like what that was the only one with kim deal right i think so that was like the I'm first, the fu- first track back and it had like it was like an automatopoeia or something like that that that's that the name of the song was like a sound effect or something oh yeah bam thwok ba- yeah bam thwok yeah yeah i uh i hated that song i fucking hated not that a good song. sign not and it was for the shrek 2 soundtrack Shut or the the fuck up. sidetrack too are you serious uh, yep i remember that also being weird that's really weird that's really Super weird weird <sighs> whatever Insane. they're dead to me that's okay <laughs> <laughs> uh but okay so fucking interesting band i gotta tell i'm i, I can't believe i again i still, still can't believe i've never heard of them before this so thank you Cole, for that uh, i hope you made it to the end of this and i hope i didn't piss you off too much uh thank you for everything but yeah interesting band i like i love doing these little bands these fucking crazy unexpected little bands yeah, it's it's fun. Even like um even the fluid, which yeah. I didn't like, it was fun to like dive into these 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 little little nooks of of I don't know if history's the right word. I think, but, it, you know, I think these, it is, because like there is a lot of um there's a lot of wild stories associated with bands that no one's ever heard of. Like I mentioned a long time ago, the band called the feeders, which is like fucking insane feeders were fucking crazy. That dude had an affair with Joe Biafra's wife. It's insane. <laughs> he, he killed birds on stage. Like he was, was fucking crazy. And, no one talks about them because no one cares about the fucking band. Like whether or not you like the band, it doesn't even matter. Like it's fascinating. It's fascinating shit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know if they're, if they're going to play shows again, but I would, I would definitely try to catch them on tour. You know, mm-hmm. whoever, whoever's selling Godhead silo albums on Discogs better not jack up the prices because I'm coming for them. Ooh. I'm going to get them. See, when this hot episode drops, those prices are going to be true to roof. All right. You better watch out. Oh, we're tastemakers. I just jacked up the prices. <laughs> Dude, I should start wearing stupid sunglasses everywhere now. Just like lean into the <laughs> asshole tastemaker thing. <laughs> I'm gonna pop on the uh, American flag sunglasses oh, every podcast. Dude, you literally own those. I do. A friend, of, uh, friend of the show, Daniel. He was literally on uh, the Death Clock episode. His, uh, it's probably airing his dirty laundry. I don't go fuck, dude. What are you gonna do about it? His girlfriend literally uh, prohibited him from wearing those sunglasses in public. <laughs> that is the funniest yeah. fucking thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I thought I thought John stole them for me, and I thought it'd be funny if he stole them, but he didn't. He's like, no, I just bought like a a nine pack. Yeah, yeah, because we're psychos who wear American yes. black sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> fuck whatever. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for no, no. Fuck that. Recap. 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 Um, me kind of by default I don't think it's an awful album but worst least favorite the scientific super cake real angry if you're in that kind of mood and you want some punch you in the face music go there um, best personal favorite share the fantasy uh, real real diverse in terms of what they're playing more fuller sounding um, a lot of, lot of songs on here just felt good to me and for me, worst, least favorite, the Friendship Village EP. It's short, but there's not a lot there for me to grab onto. It's very rough, very rough. Uh, and of course, same as Alex, best personal favorite, share the fantasy. It, it is rad. But thank you so much for listening and watching. If you want to help us out, please subscribe on uh, YouTube.com slash every album ever. Thumbs up, please. Thumbs up. And even if you're just an audio listener, if you would like to help us out, just sub on the YouTube as well. It would uh, help us out a great deal. And of course, usual rate, review, subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, yada, yada, yada. Follow me on Instagram for all the fucking updates on the show, clips of the show, clips of my Twitch channel, clips of me playing music, yada, yada, yada on that end. Pope Jesse Ventura and Alex at Mother Puncture. And as always, like with every other episode, you can find a podcast on God Hit Silo. Yeah, link in, there should be a link in the description of wherever you're listening or watching. As well as every other member.com, yada, yada, yada. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spam the fuck out of yada. There's going to be so many yadas. So many yadas. Yada, yada, yada. The and yada podcast. The, the yada, yada. And 
Patreon. Yes, yes. Patreon.com slash every album ever. Bonus episodes, early access to the loose end series. Discounts off merch. Jumping the line just like Colt did for this episode uh, for all tier two patrons. Ah, good, 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 done, good. I think it's everything. I think it's everything. Yes, you did it. We did it Ooh. through the technical errors. Another one in the bag. So many fucking technical difficulties in this one. So many. It's like I'm 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 it is we're going in the right direction. The audio should be better despite all the fucking shit that happened. It should still be good. I think it's going to be good. But because you like them more than I did, what are we listening to? Relationship. <sighs> Yeah, solid choice. Solid choice. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening and watching. And I'll see you.